Hey, what's up guys? Tanmaya for Simple Snippets and today's video tutorial is going to be on what are methods in Java. So in the previous video tutorial of this playlist that is core Java playlist, we saw in detail what are objects and classes. We saw the theory as well as the practical aspect. So if you have missed that video, you can check it out in this playlist. And with that being said, let's start off with today's topic. So today, as I mentioned, we are going to be taking a look in what are methods in Java. Basically, methods are functions. So if you're coming from C++ background, methods are nothing but functions and they're just called methods in Java because they are inside a class. So just another name, but underlying concept is the same. And I'm not going to be showing you a PPT or presentation. In fact, instead of that, what I'm going to do is we are going to use our official website wherein I have created that article. So you can already see it on the screen. So for the theoretical part, I'm going to go through that entire post and then we'll move on to the programming part. So make sure you watch this video till the end so that you understand both theory as well as practical part. So quickly open up your browser if you want and type in the URL that is our official website URL, which is simple snippets dot tech. You must be seeing something like this. You might not see this bar because this is the admin bar for me and then go to courses and open up core Java programming, which would be this page. Here I have listed all the tutorials that we are covering for core Java and you can see the list of topics that we've already covered. So these are the introduction part, which we already saw in terms of videos. And then I have created individual articles. So for the object oriented part, we have up until now seen three videos. That is the introduction, then classes and objects that we saw yesterday. And um, today we are going to go ahead with Java methods. So quickly open up this link, which is an individual article. And when you open it, you'll probably see this post. Now what I'll do is I'll just zoom in a little bit so that you can see the letters clearly. So if I hit control and plus, then the web page zooms in. Okay. So we'll start off with the theoretical aspect of what are Java methods and let's take a detailed explanation. So what all things we'll see is what are the types of methods, how to create methods and declare them, how to call a method and what happens behind the scenes. We'll see an example and also the advantages of using methods. So basically a Java method is a collection of statements that are grouped together to perform a particular operation. So in general, what it is saying that when you want to perform a particular task, let's say you want to perform addition of two numbers. So what you'll do is all the statements that are required, that is taking input from user, then performing the addition and showing the output. So it will probably take around three to four program statements, right? You'll club those statements and you'll create a method out of it and you'll give it a name. And then you'll only use that name to call all those four statements. So that that method will perform the addition and return you the addition value and then that you can directly display. So basically what is happening is it allows us to reuse the code without retyping the code and every time. So let's say you want to perform addition 10 or 20 times in the entire program, right? So instead of typing those three, four lines, you'll just use that function name or method name. So that's where code reusability comes into picture. Now in Java, every method must be part of some class, which is different from other languages. So in C, C++, we could have created functions without using classes, but in Java, everything is inside a class. So that's why we create that method inside the class and in object oriented programming method is a jargon used for function. So when we come into object oriented programming paradigm, a function is basically called as a method. Both, both are same, but just because it comes inside a class, it is known as a method. Okay. So now there are two general types of methods. That is the standard library method and the user defined method. So standard library methods, as the name suggests, are predefined and are built in methods. So they are provided by the Java programming language itself and we can directly use them. In fact, we've been using them up until now in different programs. Say, for example, we've been printing out messages on the console, right? So we use system.out.println method. So this println method was used to print output on the console screen. Similarly, there are many predefined methods which we can directly use. And we'll see many of them in the further video tutorials as we move on through this playlist. So here's an example. You can see it's properly indented and in a coding format. So that's where this website will help you to get these codes and you can directly copy and paste this code in your program and try and test it out. In fact, you can create your entire theoretical answers for your exams also on this website. So moving on to the user defined methods. Now you can also create your own custom methods. Now many a times it will happen that the program that you want to create will need some custom functionality needed by your clients or your project requirements. So in that case, you need to create your own methods, right? So these methods are known as user defined methods. So let's see the creation process of method. Now you can see an example over here, public int max int x int y. So this is basically the syntax of how we go about creating a method. And there are a few things that we need to understand about the syntax. 
So what are the all different things that are to be considered while we create a method? So you can see this syntax, right? Let's see what that syntax means. So now the first keyword over here is you can see public, right? So this is the modifier. We'll talk about it in a minute. Then we have a return type, which is a data type. You can see int. Then we have the method name max. So this max name is given by us. And then we have some parameters that we have passed in text and int y. So these parameters will be passed when we call the function as values. And then the functionality is to check which number is greater and the greater number is being returned. So you can see if x greater than y return x else return y. Now we already know what if else is here. What we're doing is we're checking the larger number. And once we get the larger number, we are returning back the number. So that's the functionality of this function max as the name suggests. So the different parts of the entire function are being described over here. Modifier, return type, method name, parameter list and the body. So little bit theory about it. So modifiers define the access of the method. Now we have to discuss modifiers in detail. We'll see that in further videos. Right now, just understand that there are four different modifiers in Java, public, protected, private and default. If you are coming from a C++ background, they're pretty much the same. Just that there is one more modifier that is default modifier over here. And when we do not give any modifier by default, the modifier is set as default. Okay. So I'm not going to get into a lot of detail as of now, because we will take a individual video for just the modifiers and see how they work differently in different programs. Then we have the return type. So when your method is going to return a value back at that time, we have to have a return type in this function. The return type is integer. If the function was not supposed to return any value, it would have been void. Okay. Then we have the method name. So method name as the name suggests is the name that we give to the function. Lastly, we have the parameter list. So the parameters that we are passing are two integer values and then we are going to make comparisons. That is the reason why we are passing two integer values because we want to compare the two. We have the method name. Okay. We already talked about the method name. Then we have the exception list. So the exception list is something that we will discuss in further videos because we haven't yet discussed exception handling. And right now, as of now, we don't have that exception scenario in this function. And then lastly, we have the method body. So whatever is inside the body is the actual functionality of the method, right? So this entire rectangular box is the body of the function. Some terms to remember are method signature. So what exactly is a method signature? So method signature is the method name and the parameter list. So you will come across this word that is signature of the method. What is the signature of the method? So you'll probably get confused. What exactly is a signature? Basically signature is just the method name and parameter list. Now return type and exceptions are not considered as a part. So in our example of this program, that is max, the signature would be something like this. You can see this line max index and int y just the name and the parameter list. Now, how do we name a method? Well, a method is typically a single word. It should be a single word. You cannot have, you cannot have spaces between the two words and then it should not start with number. It should not start with any alphanumeric word except underscore and all, and all those identifier rules that we've already seen while we create variables. And typically what happens is if it is a combination of two words, the second word is capitalized with the first letter. So compute max, you can see compute C starts as small, but then the next word, which is attached to the first word, the first letter of that second word is capitalized set X, get X, something like that. So that's the convention followed. It's not necessary to follow that, but it's highly recommended. And after declaring, so this was just the creation process. Okay. We just created this function but we haven't yet used it. So that's when we go ahead and perform calling of a method. So when we are using the function or method, I keep calling function because I'm coming from a C++ background, but understand that we are going to be using the term method only. So when you are calling a method, we just need to use the name and the opening and closing parentheses. That is the round brackets and the parameter list. So now we've already defined the way we call this is you can see this program. We have the main public class inside that we have this function. You can see over here and then in the static void main, that is the main function. We create the object of this class that is function example over here. We say new function example. So the object is created. We've already seen what is object and classes. So lastly, what we do is we say int num is equal to obj dot max. So whenever we want to call a function, we, we have to use the object and then a dot operator and the function name. So max is our function name. This max is inside our class function example. So we've created an object of function example and we see obj dot max five comma six. So we pass the two integer values, right? So this is the parameter list. So the function is expecting two integer values. So that is compulsory. If you don't pass, then it will give an error. So that's where we pass the values. Then this function is executed because this is the function call. 
so at this moment this entire code is called and then the output result is being returned right so we have the return type as int so the greater value between 5 and 6 is 6 so 6 is returned so since this function th that is this object dot function is on the rhs side and we have a equal to and then we have a variable which is on the lhs side the value that is being returned is assigned from rhs to lhs and since the value returned is also an integer value it is compatible with our integer variable that's why the num variable can hold that value so that's where you can print out system dot out dot print and max value and then you print out the num variable so what exactly happens behind the scenes is you can see this is the start of the function let's say this is where the main function starts off executing we create the object and then we give a function call right so this is where that function is called so you can see the uh, arrow going out to the function so now this entire function is executed and then the control is transferred back with the return value to this line and then the value stored inside the num and then the again execution of main function goes ahead so this was the theoretical overview and we'll see the code in real time in working also but let's go ahead and see what are the advantages of using methods well the main advantage is code reusability now imagine that we had to call or we have to perform this addition or comparison 100 times so instead of writing this if else 100 times you're just using one line right so that's where the entire code gets reduced and it is more efficient and the the idea of reusability comes into picture so that's a huge benefit and now imagine if your function was of like 100 lines so would you copy that 100 lines 100 times in your program no right instead of that you'll create a function and then you'll call it 100 times so that's where you save a lot of line of code in your program and the second main advantage is, is it basically makes the code more readable and easier so for example if you create a function add two numbers just by reading the name add two numbers you can understand that it is going to perform addition of two numbers right so that's me that makes it more readable and easier to understand so these are the two basic advantages and these are huge advantages when when we go in real life scenarios where the functions are very huge i'm again calling it function it's actually method so this was a little bit theoretical aspect you can anytime go ahead and visit this website for more details about different topics we have the entire c++ playlist also so now let's quickly move ahead to the programming part. Let me just open up NetBeans ID. Okay, so I have opened up my NetBeans ID and I have also created a project, Java project. You can quickly open up your NetBeans ID and type along with me. And what you can do is you can also copy and paste the code from the website. But I would still recommend that if you are a beginner, you should type it out yourself so that you get the best practice. So first things first, inside our class, we are going to create our function. So let's start off with public int max opening and closing round brackets opening and closing curly brackets for the body and inside the function we have to pass two parameters so i'll say int x comma int y now it's still giving us an error because we haven't yet returned any value so you can see the error missing return statement right so let's go ahead and type that out i'll say if x greater than y in the if block i'll say return x else return y okay so basically our function is ready we are good to go now in the public static void main what i'm going to do is i'm going to say function example obj is equal to new function example so what i just did is i just created an object of our class so this is the class name function example this would be the name of the project that you give when you create the project you can also create a separate class i've already taught how to create a separate class in the previous video now we are going to use this function of this object right so in order to use this max function we have to use the object now if you don't want to use the object you can make this a static function we haven't yet discussed what are static functions so that's why i did not create it over here let's keep it simple so what i'll do is i'll say int num is equal to obj dot max and then i'm going to pass 4 comma 5 okay let's save this and let's print the message system dot out dot print ln larger number is colon then plus operator to append the value i'll say num save this and let's try to run this and let's see what output we get so there you go you can see larger number is 5 so we passed value 5 and 4 so the larger out of the two is 5 if i would have changed this to 6 the 6 number would be printed in the output there you go larger number is 6 which means our program is working perfectly right so this was a very basic example of methods in java and 
if you see i have been calling it functions over and over again but try not to call it functions in java those are methods in java it's just that i am coming from a c++ background and i have that habit of calling it function so yeah this was very basic example so yeah this was a very basic example of methods in java and we've already seen the theoretical part and now the practical a basic practical program in further videos we will discuss more about functions and the types like static function then we'll also see function overloading and some more examples so that's it for this video guys i hope you understood the concept of methods and what are methods how to create methods how to call them what are the advantages and the practical aspect of methods in java so if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends if you haven't yet subscribed make sure you subscribe go check out the website and check out the different articles it's not just about programming and tutorials we have a lot of different technology blogs and articles also latest news latest tech gadgets and what not so yeah i'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial peace